Hey everyone, it's Patch 3.21 Crucible, and it's time for another build guide. Now, I think a lot of you are already familiar with this build. Today we're going to be talking about Caustic Arrow Death's Oath. If you don't know anything about this build, or why I love this build, and why I would absolutely recommend you should play this over any other League starter, well, we have personally proven that this build is one of the best builds you can play. It scales smoothly, the playstyle is butter smooth and the gameplay is some of the most fun gameplay I've had in this game. If you haven't been here before, or if you haven't checked out my channel in a while, well, we did a whole series on getting a mage blood where we did a very large chunk of it on this build. Classic Arrow Death South has the alley stamp of approval for being one of the best farmers for League Start and just being a really fun all around character to play as a build that you can play for weeks. So why don't we talk about why we want to play this build well this build has some pretty decent defenses this is not a bosser and is the one thing it struggles with as it does not have any decent regeneration or recoup to live through bosses while that is the downside it has some of the best and smoothest mapping in the game death's oath you get near rf like gameplay where you aren't really doing anything you're just simply walking through the map and the nice thing is, if scaled properly, you can get that RF gameplay up to 60% and even 80% delirious before you actually need to start realistically pressing any other buttons. This build also scales wonderfully well for around 5 to 6 div. You can pretty comfortably clear 40 and maybe even clear 60% delirious. And then for 15 to 20 divines, you can pretty much do all content in the game that is mapping related pretty smoothly. So why don't we get into the build guide and show you what I have for you today. This build guide is going to be in three parts. There are going to be three path of buildings that I will offer you. One is going to be the leveling path of building. One is going to be a mapping transition into Caustic Arrow and some ideas and possibilities on how to upgrade your build once you get the maps. And the final is going to be my completed character from last season that has about 30 to 40 div put into it as a sort of inspiration on where you can take this build past the first week of the season and how you can flesh it out into a wonderful build. So let's start with the leveling path of building. In this path of building and in every single one of these path of buildings except for my finished build, there are extensive notes on pretty much everything. I have tried my best, absolutely tried my best to get every single detail for you so you should not have any struggles you should have most of your questions answered but if there is anything else please feel free to let me know but i implore you to look at the notes as i put a lot of time into this so how do we level this build well this is the only bad side about this build we want to play a chaos damage over time build and unfortunately most chaos damage over time skills right now are awful we also want to play an attack based chaos damage over time build so we cannot really use any spell scaling to play ED Contagion or Blight or Bane and so on and so forth. So because of this, our only real option is to level with Poisonous Concoction. I have written a little paragraph on why you want to play Poisonous Concoction and why it's the correct play. But believe me, I've tried everything. Poisonous Concoction is the only way to level. You might ask yourself, but Ali, didn't Poisonous Concoction get nerfed? Yes. It will now need to use a life charge from your flask for every single projectile you do. Well, the thing is, while we're leveling, we don't really use utility flask anyway. So what's wrong with running three or even four life flasks? And with a little bit of charge recovery and charge generation from the tree, we should have no problem playing through acts one through 10 while not having a single worry about our charges. In my opinion, this is the only way to realistically level this build. And there is another downside to that. You will need, and I put it in big text here for people, you will need to get Poisonous Concoction somehow, which does not get access to it. So the only way for you to do this is you're going to need a friend to give it to you, or you'll have to level a character all the way through Act 1, and then get yourself Poisonous Concoction on either Ranger, Shadow, or Duelist, or Scion, and then make a Witch and go from there. I've tried everything I can, but I'm sorry, this is the only way to do this. I wish there was an alternative, but you do need to either ask a friend for help 
or to get a poison concoction yourself. The other portion of this is we do need to mule a pierce or a sniper's mark. Now, you do not need to do this if you wish to level through Act 1 a different way. The whole point here is this is going to be our Act 1 tree. We basically have no damage nodes. We need to find a way to get from here to Poison's Concoction. I personally am going to recommend you do it through Spark. And I have a guide on how to get to Poison's Concoction here for Act 1. So you might need to Mule, Pierce, and Cypress Mark from a Ranger. This is very easy. You simply just make a Ranger. You're going to go to Mudflats. You're going to clear Mudflats, get to the cave. Then you're going to go to Tidal Island, kill Hillrake. You're going to go to town and then Nessa should have both Pierce and Sniper's Mark for you. These are crucial for making Spark feel very comfy to play. Again, if you want to level through Act 1 to Poison the Caution a different way and you don't want to do Spark, feel free to pick whatever you're comfortable with. Holy Flame Totem and Flame Wall is a good option. Just playing Freezing Pulse the whole way through with Volley is also a good option. Do whatever you'd like. Let's talk about the tree. So the first few points are not going to be anything special. The whole point is we want to get to this area of the Atlas. This is where all of our nodes for this build are. And this is where the pain of leveling this build is, is this grueling pathing through absolutely nothing to get here ASAP. This should be enough. And especially if Poison Concoction, you should have no problem getting through Act 1 with this. Act 1 is pretty easy. Once we get to Act 2, we're going to immediately rush Replenishing Remedies and the Mastery that gives us Life Blast. This should pretty much take care of all of your problems with being able to sustain Poison Concoction as long as you're using 3 to 4 Life Blast. We're also going to pick up Entropy since it's free damage. Then in Act 3, we are going to pick up Charisma. This is going to allow us to run all of our auras. We're going to be running Grace, Malevolence, Herald of Agony. This will make it super easy for us to stay alive through Grace. And Malevolence and Herald of Agony will give us great damage. We're also picking up things of the Viper. And then this is something that will either make your leveling a breeze and an absolute joke from this point, or it's going to get nerfed into the ground. What we are going to want to do is we are going to want to abuse the new attack mastery, gain adrenaline for one second when you change stance. I have a whole video on this on my channel. It's a two minute video if you want to learn what this does and how this works. But if you want TLDR, look at my damage, 2.7k per poison. If I turn off adrenaline and we take off the stance, 1.4. Adrenaline quite literally doubles my damage and gives me 25% movement speed and attack speed making our leveling experience butter smooth. This is known by GGG on how broken it is, but we do not know and I cannot tell you if it's going to live or it's going to get nerfed. If it lives and you can leak start like this, you'll have an easy time. If it gets nerfed, you'll be fine. It's just you don't get to do double damage. Again, if you want to know more, I have a two minute video on it in my channel. Once we get this, then we are going to move on and pick up fatal toxins. and. If this is nerfed, you will skip out on multi-shot in the mastery and go for fatal toxins first, then come back and pick up multi-shot. One additional projectile is still good, and we want this no matter what, even if the mastery doesn't work. After this, in Act 5, we are then going to path down here and get Sophenums. Sophenums, fatal toxins, and Herald of Agony will basically get you to about 90% chance of poison. It's going to be a little bit awkward for us to get to 100%, so we're not going to bother. 90% is good enough. Then we are going to rush Eldritch Battery. With Eldritch Battery and you picking up at least ES on your chest plate or just a few ES pieces will make you have no mana problems anymore. With all of this, you should have about two to 300 ES and that effectively means two to 300 mana. And then we can reserve all of our mana and not have any problems. If you have any issues with your mana, you can either turn off Herald of Agony, Malevolence or Grace until you are able to pick up Eldritch Battery. Then from here, Act 6 through 10 are pretty basic. We're just going to fill in with some life and then we're going to pick up some more damage over time by CI and then come over here and pick up growth preparation since we'll want to be in this part of the tree later on. One thing I might recommend is pick up this blast radius pretty quickly as it gives you quite a lot of extra damage due to overlaps. Once you get through all this, you should be in Act 10. As soon as you're in Act 10, this path of building also provides you what you would want to change your tree like for Caustic Arrow. This is something you could do over time. You don't need to do this immediately, but basically we're just respecking out of the poison down here, out of the poison over here, and changing up the pathing a little bit over here to make it more efficient, as well as picking up a few more nodes as we gain more levels. This is a tree for 77. Leveling should be pretty easy. Act one's going to be rough. Act two through 10 will be easy. If adrenaline works, even then it's going to be a breeze. 
Once you are done with all of that, then you're going to move on to the CA respec path of building. This path of building goes over all of the gear, all of the slots and everything you want to do once you actually get to maps and how you want to put this build together. This again has had a lot of effort put into it. So I would really appreciate if you read over it and see if it answers any questions for you. The tree for this is basically the same. And this is meant to be a three to four div budget setup. If we don't include Storm Shroud, if we include Storm Shroud, it's about five to seven div. But without Storm Shroud, it's about three to five div for everything else. The last thing to quickly go over is your ascendancies as you are leveling. We are going to pick an occultist. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick a void beacon. This just gives us a nice little bit of chaos resistance shredding. And then this sets us up to pick a withering presence. Withering presence is going to make it so you don't have to deal with chaos damage while you're leveling since it gives you a hefty amount of resistance. And it's going to allow you to wither enemies, which gives you a massive damage buff. Wither is insane and we want this ASAP. Wither is insane and we want this ASAP. For your third lab, you are going to pick up Profane Bloom as we will use this immediately in endgame. And then for your fourth lab, you're going to pick up Unholy Authority as we cannot really do anything with this while we're leveling. Let's look at the gear and let's talk about how you would swap from Poison Concoction over to this build. Well, the first thing that you need to do is you need to get a bow. The reason we don't play Caustic Arrow as we're leveling is because we need at least a decent bow to be able to play it. And we do not need anything insane. We just need something very, very simplistic. What you're going to look for is a five or a six link. Ideally, a Meriketh bow, but any bow will work, especially as soon as you get to maps. And we just need plus one socket of gems or plus two bow gems and damage over time multiplier, which is a suffix. Ideally, you would also like to have an open suffix because then you can craft chaos damage over time multiplier on top of it. But you do not need that. Plus one socket of gems or plus two bows and then damage over time multiplier is enough to get you going. This should maybe be two to three chaos at best. And this should be the first thing you buy. After that, you also really want to get Vol Caustic Arrow instantly. Even if you have to buy a level one off trade and you have to level it yourself, that's fine. Vol Caustic Arrow is so insanely strong that it will take care of any single target problem you have while doing bosses or while progressing through maps. Once you have all that, you're ready to play Caustic. And that is when I would recommend for you to swap over to this tree. This build is called Caustic Arrow Death's Oath. So let's talk about Death's Oath. This is a chest plate that triggers level 20 death aura when equipped. Think of this as an invisible RF around you that does chaos damage over time. Death's Oath also has great stats on it. It has up to plus 50 all attributes, which really helps with the attributes for this build. Also has a decent amount of life. And the only downside is we take chaos damage over time for three seconds on kill. So that is why we want to have a decent amount of chaos resistance before we also get Death's Oath. This is one of the most common items in the game. It has a div card that literally drops everywhere. So getting yourself a Death's Oath is going to be easy. Also, you're going to have a decent amount of chaos resistance and try to find a little bit more if you don't feel it's good. As long as you have maybe 40 to 50 chaos resistance, that should be enough. And most of it is going to be taken care of by Withering Present. The next important thing is we need to recolor Death's Oath. We do not want to use all red sockets in it as there's very few gems that actually support it. Ideally, we're going to go for green, green, blue, blue, red, red. But if you can hit green, green, blue, red, red, that is more than enough. You do not need to link it. So please do not waste money on a linked version. All you need is six sockets on Death's Oath. And you could start with a five socket Death's Oath too. As soon as you buy it, you're going to corrupt it and then use tainted chromatic orbs to re-roll it. This might be a little bit expensive. But that's okay. You should be able to play Caustic Arrow just fine until you can get to this. But the reason we want to use tainted chromatic orbs is because Death's Oath has 180 strength requirement on it, which makes it very difficult to attempt to get green or blue gems. While Tainted Chromatic Orbs simply do not care about attribute requirements. Every outcome from them is equal. So getting greens and blues is just as likely as getting reds. These should be a little bit expensive at the start of the season, but you should need more than five to 10 to potentially hit one of the two good combos. Since you have it, just slap it on. It might be a little bit difficult to put it on because 180 strength, so you might need to potentially maybe buy like a strength amulet from a vendor, quickly slap the strength amulet on and then put Death's Oath on. And then the 50 attributes from Death's Oath will potentially make you go over 180 to take care of the strength requirements. This might get a little bit funky, but be ready to get 180 strength for Death's Oath. But do remember, oh, you'll get up to 50 stats from it back. 
once we have Def South and once you have your supports in it, your gameplay is pretty much automatic. At that point, you can pretty much just hold W and Def South will kill everything that isn't big rares or bosses that at which that that point you'll just press Vol Caustic Arrow twice and then just go AFK and watch the boss die. Let's talk about the rest of the gear for this build. So for a quiver, all you're really looking for on a quiver is resistances. If you need more resistances, you always want to get life. And then you can either look for damage over time multiplier, damage with bows, or an additional arrow. Additional arrow doesn't actually increase your damage, but it'll give you a little bit better clear if you are looking for that. For a helmet, we are just simply going to use any generic life resistance helmet. And ideally, you want to get mana reservation efficiency of skills on it with Eldritch Currency. The reason for this is until we get an amulet called Impressence, we are going to struggle on having enough mana to be able to use everything. You're going to use Despair and Enfeeble on a Blasphemy, but we cannot turn both of them on as we would have no mana. So if we want to use Determination, Grace, Malevolence, and Despair, we will need a little bit of reservation that's going to be taken care of by mana reservation efficiency on a helmet, a reservation efficiency jewel, and the reservation efficiency mastery that was added this season, along with charisma. Once you have the helmet, you should be able to blasphemy a despair. Try to do this ASAP to be able to benefit from profane bloom. But if you cannot do this immediately and want to get your profane bloom on earlier, you can either choose to drop determination or grace until you're able to get this roll. For gloves, there is only one pair of gloves you want this, and that is Asenaf's Gentle Touch. These gloves are insane. They give you explodey effect, they have a decent amount of life, and they give you temporal chains, which makes you even tankier. We are going to need three curses for this, so that is when you pick up Whispers of Doom. Do not bother picking up Whispers of Doom until you have your Asenaf's Gentle Touch, as you already are at two curse limit when you do your Uber Lab with Unholy Authority. These gloves will chain off of themselves and basically wipe your screen for you. These are super cheap. The drop rate of them has been increased quite heavily and there's a div card for them. So you should be able to find these for 10 to 20 C really easily, especially since Poison Spark is being nerfed and that's the only other build that really uses them. For boots, we just want generic movement speed, life resistance boots. Feel free to get whatever you want on this. And for the Eldritch Implicit, you want to get avoid elemental ailments as this is going to make you ailment immune a little bit easier. And then for the other one, you can either get movement speed or chaos resistance. It is up to you. For an amulet, we can quite literally get any amulet you want. Pick whatever stats you want. The only important thing is you want to get a decent amulet that you like so you can anoint sovereignty on it. Eventually, we're going to be getting an impressance, but impressance is too difficult to get early on as it is a elder drop. It is a pretty common elder drop and basically no other build uses this item. So it will be super cheap and pretty easy to get a few days into the season. There are five versions of this amulet. Please make sure you get the correct one. Do not get any of the other ones. You want to get the one that has despair, has no reservation if cast as an aura. Not only does this give us chaos resistance, damage of time and life, which we really want, but we need it to be despair that costs no mana. As soon as you have this, you can then also include in people into your build as your despair will be free. And the reservation that despair costed will just be moved on to enfeeble, which makes you even tankier. For rings, we want to eventually actually use a magic ring. This is because our helmets, once it becomes available a few days into season, will be upgraded to Viridi's Veil. And this helmet is absolutely nuts. This does quite a lot of good for our build and it fixes a lot of issues we have. Not only can it have up to 25% all res, which makes res capping even easier. But it has two important stats that make us incredibly tanky. Damage of enemies hitting you is unlucky when you have a magic ring equipped. That means every enemy that hits you will roll for damage twice and pick the lower number. And you take no extra damage from crits if you have a magic ring in the left slot. That's why we want to eventually use a magic ring to become crit immune and to make enemies double roll on us for the smaller number. Until this, you just want to use any generic ring you want. A lot of the gear, as you can tell, is just generic life and resistance gear. So it makes it really easy to gear this at the start of a season. Once you do get Viridis, which should be again, pretty cheap to do basically no build wanting that. That's the nice thing about all these items is no build realistically wants any of these items except for Death Rush. 
But until then, just use whatever ring you want. Eventually, your magic ring, try to get tier one life on it. And then for the suffix, use the suffix as a flex roll with the crafting bench. Either to put strength or dex or an additional frenzy charge or resistances if you need more resistances. Do whatever you want with the suffix. Try to do this on a Iolite ring as well as it gives you chaos damage. Or you can do this on a Amethyst ring for chaos resistance if you need more. For other ring, we're going to eventually want Death Rush. Death Rush is just absolutely good for mapping. It's going to give us adrenaline on kill. This rolls from one to three seconds. Don't get a one second of Death Rush. It'll feel too bad. Try to get a two or three one. And then the second roll, the life on kill, is going to be a very large portion of your recovery while mapping. Try to get a max roll if possible, but even a bottom roll is going to make you insanely tanky. Lastly, for gear, we have a Stygian. Try to get whatever you want on the Stygian. Eventually, you're going to want to recraft your Stygian with a Void Shock. And then you're going to want to get a Abyss Jewel with a Void Shock. And between the belts, the jewel, and the implicit on your boots, you'll have a 100% chance to avoid being shocked. So Storm Shroud will eventually make you ailment immune. Until then, just try to get a Stygian with life and resistances on it. Maybe even strength or dex if you need that. And then for the Abyss Jewel, you can simply just get whatever you want. I would honestly recommend at the start of the season to use this for life and resistances. For flasks, you can use defensive flasks. There's no utility flask. There's no unique flask we really want in this build. So we're just going to use a simple package of granite, jade, quicksilver, and sulfur. For these, I would recommend to get armor, evasion, and movement speed suffixes. And you can put these on any of these flasks wherever you can find them for cheaper. And then for implicit, you want increased effect. Lastly, for jewels, we do have one small cluster jewel that we want to use. And this is a very easy one to get that's also very cheap. We want a evasion rating sublime form jewel. This is going to give us 10% all res and give us 50% increased reservation efficiency on grace, which allows us to fit everything together very nicely. Until you have this, you won't be able to run three auras in a curse as well. So you are going to either have to give up a defensive curse, malevolence, or not run your curse around you. For the other jewels, we are simply just going to want a reservation jewel to help with our reservation and then a just generic damage over time jewel. I put in the notes a few possible good rolls. Feel free, free to just get whatever you want. And you could always use at the buildings trade for these items feature to find yourself a jewel. For the last two jewel sockets, we're going to want to get Transcended Mind. This is a jewel that turns all intelligence within the circle into damage over time. If we put it here, we're going to gain about 6% of our increased Yes, And this is best in saw in this. These are kind of rare as people need to start doing temple, but they're not really worth anything. So they're a nice day two, day three upgrade. Until then, just copy paste this jewel and just use another generic damage over time jewel. The same goes for Storm Shroud. I would recommend to rush this pretty quickly as being ailment immune feels really comfy. Problem is, this is a pretty expensive jewel. So until you can get it, just copy paste another generic damage over time jewel. After you have all this, you should be pumping. You should have absolutely no problem just tearing through everything with a Death's Oath and with a decent bow. From here, I might recommend looking into upgrading your bow next, as that is going to scale both your Death's Oath and it's going to scale your Classic Arrow. I put a guide on how you would craft this bow. It is 100% deterministic except for the start of the bow. In total, this bow will cost you anywhere between five to eight div to craft, and it will quite literally triple your damage. Just to prove how easy crafting this bow is, I want to do a quick guide on how to make it yourself through Craft of Exiles emulator. So what we're going to want to do is ideally get a item level 83 uninfluenced Merikith bow. Then we are going to alt spam it until we get damage over time. Ideally, you want to do this until you get tier one damage over time. But whatever roll are up for getting is where you start. Getting tier one damage over time multiplier isn't that difficult. It has a pretty decent weighting. And once you have it, you want to make sure it has no other prefixes, no other suffixes. You just want a bow with nothing but damage over time multiplier on it. After this, what you're going to do is you are going to go to your crafting bench and you are going to put can have three crafting modifiers on it and then cannot roll attack modifiers. What this is going to do is it's going to fill up your suffixes. So when we exalted slam, it can only hit a prefix and it's guaranteed to hit level of socketed gems. From this point, 
what we want to do is we then want to use a hunter exalted orb and this will guarantee give us increased chaos damage over time. How good your bow is, is determined by what role you get here. A absolute best in slot version of this bow simply means hitting tier one chaos damage over time here. As the rest of this is fully deterministic. If you want to actually make these for profit, this is how you can make them for profit. Do this. And then if you get a high tier, sell it for a lot of profit. But as you can see, we always hit chaos damage over time. And most of the time we will probably get tier two or tier three. And that's more than good enough. Once you have a bow that looks like this with socketed gems, chaos damage over time and damage over time multiplier, we are going to go to the bench and remove crafted modifiers. So we remove the cannot roll attack and cannot roll multi-mod. We're going to recraft multi-mod back on here. And then we are going to finish the craft by putting chaos damage over time multiplier as a craft to fill in the suffixes. And then for prefixes, we are going to put plus level of socketed support gems. This is a ideal best in slot bow for this build. And as you saw, all of it is deterministic. You simply just need to sit here and alt spam for tier one damage over time multiplier. You can do this with tier two, but I really recommend if you're gonna put this much money into a bow, that's effectively your best in slot bow, to spend a little bit of time with it and to get tier one damage over time. If we were to take this bow and put it into path of building, as you can see, it straight up increases my damage by 52%. And that is with kind of low tier gear. This bow is your main way of scaling your damage for cheap at the start and is probably one of the first things I would recommend to save up for to do this craft. After that, what I would recommend to do is potentially start looking for other upgrades. At this point, Empower becomes really good. And if you do not have an Empower yet, I really, really recommend getting it. As the only reason we put plus two support on this bow is for Empower. When you do finally get this bow and add it to your build, it's going to skyrocket your damage pretty hard. At this point, what I might recommend if you want more clear is to drop Concentrate Effect. It's going to reduce your damage quite a lot, but then you can instead put Arrow Nova on here. This is going to make your Caustic Arrow spread all over the place. It's going to help you clear quite a lot. If you feel like your clear is good with just Death's Oath and you don't feel like you really need this or you don't want the play style of Arrow Nova, then simply just stick with Concentrate Effect and do substantially more damage. Once you have your bow and all of your basic techniques and items to make this build work, I would recommend to start looking for some endgame upgrades. A good example here might be to start looking at Awakened Jewels. For example, Void Manipulation is about a 15% DPS increase or Vicious Projectiles, which is another 10% while being one of the cheapest Awakened Jewels in the game. And you can also do the same for Death Soth. You can look for Awakened Void Manipulation and so on and so forth. You can start looking for quality on your gems, especially on Despair. And you can start looking for Cluster Jewels and some other gems that make your build even better. An example might be to look for a Zabiqua Glorious Vanity. This will turn a keystone into divine flesh, which makes a portion of your elemental damage be dealt to your chaos damage, as well as giving you a lot of max chaos res. With this, I'm at 82% chaos res. That means all my elemental damage that gets converted, I technically take less damage on. And we can start looking for clusters. So for clusters for this build, you would want Unholy Grace, Unraveringly Evil, and Wicked Pal as your large clusters. These are fairly easy to craft, if I'm not mistaken. And they're pretty cheap to buy as well. These were about a div or two each for best in slot clusters. And then for mediums, you just want to run four flow of life unwaveringly evil. I like this combo the most as flow of life gives you quite a lot of extra health, which allows you to get up to four and a half thousand and maybe even five thousand health with better gear. And the regen is really nice to make it feel a little bit more comfortable on bosses. Of course, we're still going to need a subline form. So you might potentially want to look for a better version of this with some dex or int or strength or whatever stat you might need for your attributes. Once you have good clusters and once you have good gems, that's kind of the end of this build. There aren't many ways of really scaling it other than maybe looking for a corrupt depths oath plus one all res is a really nice corrupt or maybe looking for corrupt on impressence. But realistically, Outside of just getting really nice generic life resistance gear, there isn't anything else you can really do for this build since your best in slot bow is deterministic. 
you could look for a better quiver and you could potentially look for a few better jewels. The final, final, final upgrade I'd make for this before pushing for something like Mage Blood, for example, would be to fit in some Grand Spectrums. Now, these are very, very expensive. What I'd recommend to do for these is to get a minimum Frenzy Charge, a minimum Endurance Charge, and a maximum Life or Resistances Grand Spectrum, and to replace all of your normal jewels with them. These will give you a lot more damage, especially because of the Frenzy one giving you around 12% more damage. And they'll make you a lot tankier and give you a lot more resistances through the percent life one and the endurance charge one. These are effectively the like GG endgame item you're really looking forward in this build. And the only other things to do at this point, once you've maybe put 20, 30 div in this build, is to go ahead, find your favorite farming strategy and get yourself a mage blood, a head hunter, or farm for a different build. I really like that this build maxes out at a very low budget, which makes most of its power come to you instantly for a very cheap price that either allows you to go for a chase item that you're after or to use it to farm a diff for a different build. In terms of how much damage this build can do in total, with a mage blood, you will top out at about 12 to 15 million dot DPS. It's very hard to push ball caustic past that. Currently, I'm at 5 million with my gear. That's because I'm using Aeronova. If I take off Aeronova and I instead use Concentrate Effect, I'm currently at 8 million. And the only way to push this further would be Mage Blood to have a increased effect Sulfur Flask and to potentially get things such as a level 5 of power for another million damage, a level 21 Caustic for another million damage, and just a few better gems here and there. As I said, 12 to 15 million is the most you can do out of this. In terms of Death Aura, the most you can realistically get out of Death Aura is maybe 800 to a million total dot DPS once you get a Mage Blood or once you get Frenzy Charges from Grand Spectrums. But it does kind of stop around here. I wish there was better ways to scale this. That's all I really have to say for this. I really hope you enjoyed this guide. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or come to my Twitch and ask them to me personally. I'll be more than happy to help you with this build and talk about it. I hope you enjoy this build if you do play it as your league starter. I absolutely loved doing my Mage Blood challenge on this. It was such a comfortable and fun time. And I really liked the Oblivion microtransaction for Scourge Arrow. It made giant white puddles everywhere. And with all of the AOE scaling that we had and with Aeronova, it was actually quite amusing being able to fill the screen with basically Delirium Fog at will at any time. I also liked that with just Withering Step and my potions, I was actually fairly fast and was actually quite zoomy through maps and doing a farming strategy that doesn't require much gear or to do hard content allows us to zoom zoom really quickly when you can just instantaneously snap everything with just a half a second of death aura and then have your asinaps proliferate and kill the rest of the screen. One use case, if you're interested in making a lot of money, is to do essences. This build would do great for essences because you can fill the whole screen with caustic arrow. So the essences are always taking damage and you simply can just run in circles around them while Caustic and Death's Oath does all the work. Not only is it fast as well, which is good for essences since you can clear them faster, but it's a good place out because you never have to be near the essence monsters. That's all I have to say for this build. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it as your league starter. If you do play it, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.